I figured I would just quickly go through the tools that I like to use when I do some painting. And it's not going to be in order. I just going to I'm just going to pick one item that I have here and go through them and show you a little bit. So this I actually have not used before, but I always wanted one when I was painting. And this is a scraper and then I can uh, take out the paint out of the roller, the sleeve, whenever I'm done painting. So I'm very excited to use this. And then it has a, uh, I think I can use it as screwdriver and some other things. So that's gonna be very handy. And then obviously a scraper, fill some holes and patch some things. So I need that. And obviously a paintbrush. This one is a straight one. Um, for the corners, I really like to use an angle one that is has an angle. Uh, I do have that one as well. So that is this one. This is my favorite brush to use. It works really well to do the edges and corners. And then I have my roller or my sleeve. And I did some research. Apparently the microfiber sleeves are the very best. And so I bought this at Home Depot and it says premium microfiber and it says professional quality so I guess that's probably the best. I have the 10 millimeter one. I think 8 one works really well too but I have a 10 one they didn't have the 8 one so I picked a 10 millimeter one and then obviously just a plastic to have my uh, tray on and everything so I don't get paint on the floor and then my mud. <laughs> See I told you it's not going to be in order. I just use this mud and then I have a wood filler I do want to fill the nail holes and my baseboards and trim around the windows and stuff. And a sanding block <laughs> to sand everything down wherever I patch things. And then tape. I don't know how much I'm going to be using this, but I prefer edging with my paintbrush instead of tape because it seems to always bleed through. So if I can get straight edges with my paintbrush, I prefer that. And I have this little can I bought that a while ago, so it's used. It's just to do the edg edging along the ceiling and corners and everything like for my paintbrush. So I have it easy to pull that out. And then I have caulking. I want to seal the baseboards and trim around the windows because I think it just looks so much more finished if you have it all sealed up nice. So that's what I will be using that for. And then this is something that I have not done before, but I do want to do it this time. And that is sand my walls in between coats. And from doing my research, I think it makes a huge difference to do that. So I bought this sandpaper and I, I was just reading on some other sandpaper that they had at Home Depot. And I believe you use, if, if I'm correct, Right now, like when whenever I want to paint the walls, I'm going to use the 120 sandpaper. I'm just going to lightly sand them down and then do my first coat. And then before, before I do my last coat, I'm going to do the 220 sandpaper and give it another final sanding, just a very light sanding. And that's supposed to make the walls really smooth and professional looking. So. I'm excited for that and see if I can uh, do the best job that I can possibly do. <laughs> then I have just my tray and I did end up, I don't know if this is a splurge or not, but I did end up the inserts for my tray. Um, this tray I bought a while ago already, so I've used it multiple times, but I mostly I've used it with a insert and it makes it a lot easier to clean out and the inserts are not that expensive. The tray originally was a little bit more expensive, but I figured if I I spend it once and I've used it multiple times already, I can like for this specific tray I can easily find the inserts. Some of the trays are a little bit hard to find inserts for them, but this one is pretty easy. So that's why I have this one. And then I have my final thing and that is my paint. I decided to go with Benjamin Moore. I did lots of research and I asked other people for opinion. I asked on Instagram actually, some of you will know that. And most of you voted Benjamin Moore above Sherwin-Williams. And I think both brands have really good paint but 
just doing my research, I just decided to go with Benjamin Moore. And one more reason why I ended up doing that, because I have already have three gallons of paint. They're not completely full, but they're used that I picked up at uh, Sarcamp, the recycling. And so I figured if I could just use that paint later on, maybe for a bathroom or laundry room or something, then I would have this exact same paint for the whole house because I already have three gallons. And also it was 20% off on all of their paint this month. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the same later when I buy more paint, but for now it was anyways. And so I bought the, uh, okay, let's see. I bought the middle grade, like they have all these grades. So every paint company has a lot of grades of paint, like cheaper one and the middle class and then they have really expensive paint and this is the middle um, middle ground I would say the middle paint it's not the most expensive and it's not the cheapest of their brand but this is what he recommended the guy that worked there he said that this was really good paint so it is the eggshell finish or satin some companies have it in satin the, this company calls it eggshell and then it's the acrylic paint and primer. I believe it's gonna be good, but we will find out and see if I if I prefer this over bare. That is what I so far always used, and now this is my first time using Benjamin Moore, so I'm excited to see if this is gonna be any better or if there is a difference in the paint. And then I have the ceiling paint. Um, this is just a flat um, ceiling paint that I I also want to paint our ceilings. They've never been painted. They have a, a light texture on them, but I would just like to have them at least painted. I know flat, you can't really wipe anything, but at the same time, you can easily touch up spots if you need to. And then I have my stick here to stir around the paint. And then I have this little thing here that is to put on my paint can like that. So whenever I pour the paint into my paint tray, it doesn't pour into the crack here. <laughs> it was, it's not a necessary thing, but it was very cheap. I think a dollar or something. I figured, you know what, I can always use this again. So anyways, that is the products that I will be using. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm gonna fill the nail holes on the baseboards and also do the uh, caulk the tops of the baseboards. And so I also want to paint the baseboards after I've done that. And for that, uh, since we do not have real wood baseboards and they are painted, I was kind of worried that some of the paint would not stick because they're very glossy and a very smooth finish. Waterborne bonding primer. And he said that this bonds to pretty much anything glossy. So I bought the primer to do my baseboards and then just the paint and this is a little bit more glossy than the walls. This is the satin pearl. See, um, some companies have the satin and eggshell. That's the same. And this company, satin is one, uh, one step shinier than eggshell, if that makes any sense. So that's what I picked up for the baseboards. And then I, the colors that I picked for the walls are silhouette. And that's for the darker walls. I, it's pretty much the same color that they're now, kind of blackish, and that is the color Silhouette by Benjamin Moore, and then the light color that I picked is Calm by Benjamin Moore. So I'm excited to see if it's going to make any difference or how it's going to look. I, I don't know. Some people take weeks to decide on a paint color. I just walked in there and I just picked the first two colors that caught my eye and I don't know if I made too quick of a, of a decision but I was actually surprised for myself that I did as much research as I did because I usually do not do any research I just jump into it and I try it but this time I just wanted to make sure that I did it right and except for the paint color I decided to paint quickly on but anyways let's start painting I'm gonna start with the ceiling
you're probably wondering what I'm doing with a hammer on my walls. <laughs> I learned this a while ago. If you have little bumps and if you had have taken out a screw somewhere and there's a little bump there, you can easily just hammer it in and mud over it and that way you have a very nice smooth wall. These walls are not perfect by any means, but I did patch a lot of little dings and and little holes like nail holes and stuff like that but it's not all nail holes it was a lot of just little dents and things like that that I patched up and after I had patched everything it was looking pretty rough but I sanded everything down and wiped it down to make sure that I had all the dust off and then I started painting and when I started painting I was quite disappointed in the color to be honest um, but in the end, once I had them all painted and they were dry, I'm actually very happy with the color. But when I started painting, it looked so chocolate brown that I was kind of disappointed because I did not think that I had picked chocolate brown. But compared to the color that they were previously, it did really look like chocolate brown. But now that it's all painted and finished, it actually does look more black except for when the sun shines on it, it would look more dark grayish, brownish, I don't know what, what exactly, but it looks good. This is how I sanded the walls this time around. It was so much quicker, I just wrapped the sandpaper around here and just hold it I was holding it in the back here and quickly gave them a very light sand. Like I did not press, like I was just very lightly went over the walls. And I can tell that there's quite a bit of lint and just these little things that comes off. So I think it is actually necessary. I, I've never sanded the walls before, like in between coats, but I think I might do this from now on because I can see how much little things come off and that's going to make the wall so much smoother, I think so. I will dust the walls now and give them one last coat and the dark walls are done. As always in a new project, you always learn something and you always know of some things that you want to do differently and some things that you learn that work really well. One thing, I think the walls turn out really well. I think the sanding really helps them to be more smooth. And also, one trick, if you roll your walls, I think it works best if you roll up and down and keep going in the same direction. Don't change your direction. And also start from one corner and continue to the next corner and do not let the edge dry until you continue. I think that really helps and I also was really glad that I had this little thing to scrape out my paint. I got so much paint out of the that roller over and over again. And then you might also notice that I filmed this over multiple days because it took me a whole week <laughs> to get this project done. And one thing that happened that took me a lot longer was underneath that big window after the second coat of paint it started to form some bubbles or blisters I don't know what you would call them and I fixed them four times and every single time they appeared again not the same ones but new ones and I finally gave up so you will I will show you in the end of the video but if you have any advice or any suggestion or that you ever experienced that please let me know and yeah hopefully this helps you or motivated you or you just enjoyed it whatever it did for you I hope it was worth watching and thank you for watching and I will see you next time
paint experts, please let me know what I can do to fix these bubbles. Do you see those bubbles in the paint? I have one spot in this living room and that is right under the window that has these bubbles and I fixed them four times. I scraped them off, filled them in with mud, painted over them again and new bubbles form every single time. These are not the same ones. I think there was some here earlier. I fix those and then I paint again and new bubbles come up. So I have no idea why that is. I did some research and apparently it's because if you don't let the paint or the mud dry enough or if you don't dust enough that can cause the bubbles to form but I've tried everything. I've let it dry overnight. I dusted it very well before I painted and every single time they show up again.